Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to World Book and Copyright Day Fest. I hope you can all see my screen. Today we are celebrating with authors. We have um, eight authors today, and they will each read and um, answer your questions. And if you have any questions, we'll also have some questions for the children to answer. And Gucci will take down the names of the children that answer them correctly so that we can give them prizes later on. Okay, so we are celebrating, celebrating World Book and Copyright Day, as I said. The theme is books, a window into the world during COVID-19. And it's to encourage everyone that since every, we are all social distancing, this is the time to dig into books. This is the time you've never read before. This is the time to at least see, try one book or two that you have by your, um, that you have by your bedside. Um, so, and we're going to go into the uh, reading. We'll start with Tammy. Tammy is reading from her book. This Tammy is a radio presenter. She's an author and a serial social entrepreneur. She's also a teacher as well. Tammy has written so many books. Just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many others that are not here, but she's written um, so many chapter books for children, all very relatable with interesting stories. Um, she will be reading A Moon for Your Toys today. That's this one here. Yes, I'll be reading A Moon for Your Toys. A Moon yes, so. for Your Toy. Okay. You please, can, you, to me. can I be a timekeeper? Okay, timekeeper. All right, no problem. <laughs> How yes. many minutes do I have? 15. I have 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Five, please. Um, if the children have questions, if they don't, then you can continue reading. Okay, so the title of our book today is A Moon for Your Toys. A Moon. <laughs> we all have the moon every day. It comes out in the night. And toys are all over. Children have toys in the toy room. A Moon for Your Toys. Written by Timilolua Adeshina. So welcome today again, and let's enjoy snippets. And uh, we're going to finish the story to a part that at least you can relate, and I can ask my questions. I'll start. Moni and Minnie burst into the large kitchen noisily, just as their mom, Mrs. Mata, peered into the bin of sweets. There were only a few sweets and chocolates called Babadidu inside. She raised an alarm. Who took the sweet? Screeched Moni's mom. Hmm. If you've ever heard that before in your house, I'd like to see your hand. And I'd like to say this after me. Just say, it wasn't me. <laughs> and Mini said, not me. Wasn't me, Muni said again, as her other brother. And the mom said, neither did Happy the dog or Kit the kitten. Of course we don't have one, shrieked their mom. It was you, said Muni. It was you, brother, said Muni. I'm so sure one of you did. So no one is watching TV or getting any treats to eat again until you had meat who took it, snapped their mom. But mom, muttered Minnie. What did you say? Said mom scowling. Nothing, nothing, said Minnie hastily. Then we'll just have to wait for the culprit to come forward. Meanwhile, no more TV and pocket money again for two of you. Go into your room and stay there till I discover who it is. Mrs. Mata ordered. Oh my, this is serious, said fat elder brother. We are in deep, deep trouble. Moni said to his younger sister, as both of them walked dejectedly down the stairs to their rooms. His sister did not say any word. It was obvious she was very upset. How could he make their mom change her mind, thought Moni, the big, bad elder brother. So there's commotion in the house, like lockdown today. We've had it for weeks now. Everybody's home. Things are happening. Children are peckish. Everyone wants to eat something. 
and suddenly the sweets have disappeared from the sweet jar. Who did that? No one knows. Maybe it's just a nobody. We have to get to the bottom of this. Children, who do you think took the sweets? Let's go on. Chapter two, a glimpse of the moon for a toy. Chinkini, glimpse of the moon. Who is crazy about the moon? Why does she want a glimpse of the moon for a beautiful toy that was just bought for her? Little Minnie slumped on the carpet and willed the clock to go faster. She was bored. During the holiday, many children have been bored. Their mom had banned them from watching TV till they knew who took the sweets. It was completely unfair that mom was punishing her for what she did not do. She was sure it must be her brother. But how could she prove it? She stomped around the room. She didn't want to read a book. She had read all the books. She had completed her homework. Her room was tidy and she had even emptied the beans in the kitchen. This is her, seated. She's really bored. Then she remembered her incomplete faces of the moon chat. She could not catch a glimpse of the moon, talkless of drawing it on her chat for the night. This was her favorite pastime. Like this holiday, everyone should have something concerning what they want to do in the future. She wants to be an astronaut. So she completes the faces of the moon every night. Her own little thing that she loves doing. Ever since she was a little girl, her big dream was to be an astronaut one day. She wanted to see the moon tonight desperately. Oh, she had to do something. There's only one place to go. Minnie stuck her head around the door and peeked into her brother's untidy room. He lay on the floor, peeking with his spinning top and butter covers. Can I catch a glimpse of the moon from your room, please? Minnie asked her brother, certainly. No, snap back. I am not your seven. I'm a boy while you're a girl. I'm big and fat. You're too small. Why do you want to come to my room this time around? It's your sister. I have a deal for you. Suddenly, her, his sister said, Hmm, you have a deal for big brother? And he held up her moon chat to her brother. No. You can keep my set of soft toys if you allow me into your room. Do we have a deal? Minnie mm -hmm. asked. Her brother held her hand and smiled sweetly at her. No, sis. I don't want your anik at all. What do you want now? I'll tell you, he said. I want your new dancing line, a kitty robot. Money Baggin smiling. Their father had always taught them to always get the best out of every negotiation. Do we have a deal? Money asked. But that's my new toy. I haven't even played with it yet. His room. Wait, wait, Mini said reluctantly. Only for this night, she said. That's the robot he wants. He doesn't want the toy. He doesn't want this one. Imagine what about again for just a glimpse of the moon. Okay. I get to keep your robot forever. That's the deal, said the brother affirmatively. But Minnie didn't hear him say forever. In her excitement to catch the glimpse of the moon, she extended her middle finger to her brother for a bet like this. Let's bet. The way we always bet when we're smaller. Paying attention to what he was saying. Wow, can't you see the amazing moon? Explained, exclaimed Minnie, distracted by the glimpse of the dazzling moon. She wants to be an astronaut. She loves the moon always. She, she has been dreaming of the day that one day she will land on the moon. She didn't hear the negotiation deal. She didn't hear the deal well. Can I have the talking, flying, and dancing robot? Demanded her brother. Give me the robot now. Give me the robot now. That's the robot. Imagine. But just a glimpse of the moon. The deal turned back. Chapter three. Moni sat on the bed playing with the talking, flying, and dancing robot. While his sister gazed at the moon and filled her chat. 
Hardly as she settled down in this untidy room, she began to chat with him. Do you know the moon is four and a half billion years old? I'm going to ask you, how old is the moon? Do you know the moon too has years? Like, you know how old you are? Well, the moon is four and a half billion years old. She said excitedly. We need to know how to face her brother, only to hear. Time up. Time up out of my room. I need my privacy. What? But I haven't seen the mountains and the valleys on the moon yet. Do you believe it? There are valleys and mountains on the moon. Well, you can look at it another time. It's called money. Be on pale. You know, meaning you can watch the moon from my room every night. Money said casually. Money's face brightened. I can? Sure, you can watch the moon every day as long as you tidy up my room every day too. Minnie looked around her brother's messy room. Dirty clothes were scattered here and there. Biscuit wrappers, papers littered on the floor. Phew, her brother's room was so untidy. No thanks, tidy it yourself. Then you have no other choice but to leave my room this minute. You are no longer welcome, Money said. Two problems. That's unfair. Give me back my toy. No, I get to keep it forever. That's the deal. Imagine, Nini has not found food to the streets, and she's sure she didn't take her, She gave her brother her best toy, a kitty. Lovely robot toy. She wants to be an astronaut. She loves science. She likes playing with robots. She's in the robotic um, group in school. Yes. And she loves everything science, but her brother is doing something and she needs to find out. Scientists love to find out and investigate. How will she do that? Many burst into tears, dashing out of the room to the sitting well, room to report. All video. Through audio. I did it. I did it. I did it. Mom, help me. It's my brother again. She will <laughs> help me. See he by love her brother. The Akiti robot summer salted from the table to the floor of the room. Super fly mode activated. Screeched the activate acti the robot. Money come here now. Screamed their mom. See the robot summer salted all over the room. And the big brother is happy. Hmm. This is a lockdown situation. Brother and sister in the house. I'm sure there will be many fights in the house this season. If you know you fought with your brother or sister, your hands up. <laughs> so that's the situation in Mrs. Matter's house. So much has happened that day. Sweets are stolen. Their mom says, no TV, no pocket money. And Minnie has been chased away from her brother's room. She needs her robot back. Okay, their mom is hungry now. How could you do that? Asked Mrs. Mata. Mom, you told us money was a means of exchange. Protested money. To exchange means to give the bread seller money and get a loaf of bread, or give the ice cream seller money and get a cone of ice cream in exchange. Shrink their mom. That's what exchange means. No, mom, have you forgotten that exchange can also be by butter? Trade by butter is the exchange of commodity. Yes, what's trade by butter, if you know it? What is trade by butter? Someone is raising hand here. No, I'm not calling you in the house. <laughs> it means exchange of commodity between two people or parties in a transaction. Yes, there has to be a transaction here. But well, that method was used in the olden days before the use of money stated their mom. Hey, oh, give me back my kitty robot. <laughs> give me back money. Give me back. Mom, Minnie and I had a bet. Ask her, said money. Don't mind him, mommy. I gave him my new robot in exchange for a glimpse of the moon. Now he does not want to give me back, Minnie declared. You gave your brother your new toy for just a glimpse of the moon? I can't believe this, their mom said slowly. Mommy, 
you know how much I love watching and daydreaming about the moon? Certainly you should understand. What I understand is you were too desperate to get what you wanted. You certainly must understand that you can't always get what you want. Be okay. patient. When you want something badly, but why has just walked away from the deal? Want damn me. Let me just get to one part and I'll stop now. So it's just that part. Let's get <laughs> okay. Let's get okay, so just let's after get, this, one, this one. So that we'll be able to yeah, ask the yeah. question and then we'll move on to the oh, next oh. question. Thank you so much. You're doing amazing. <laughs> okay, the question I want to ask is do you think the deal will be cancelled? Is it good to make a transaction when you are desperate? You should learn to do. We children should learn to be patient. In as much as you want something so desperately, and it seems as if your life depends on it. It's at that point in time you should ask yourself, I should take a pause. Should I make a deal when I'm desperate? Then lastly, let me go to the point where I leave everybody in suspense. Now go to your room and bring me that toy right now, or that their mom. What? Are you taking side with my little sister? She stomped down the passage and slammed the bedroom door as hard as he could. Can I watch the TV now? Mommy, please. Shush, Minnie. Note to that I found. Who took those sweets? Snapped their yeah, mom. Thank you. Hope we had a wonderful time. So guess, children, who took the sweets? The deal turned bad. Awesome. Did Moni know how to make a deal? Who knew how to make the deal better? Was it Minnie, the youngest sister? Or was it Moni, the older, robust brother? Had the two of them. Who took the sweets? Okay, Sister if you have the brother. answer to the question, please Who raise your hand so that I can unmute you. If you have the answer to the question, raise your hand so I can unmute huh? you. Who has been listening to the story? Okay, so this is down sweet. <laughs> Okay, who has the answer to the question? I can see parents trying to tell, <laughs> trying to give the children expo. <laughs> okay, who has the answer so that we can, I can take down your name and your phone number and so that we can move on to the next author? Who is already here? Yes, raise your hand. Or do you know how to raise your hand? They can answer it in the chat. Okay, exactly. So you can answer in the chat if you cannot, if you don't know where to press the raise your hand um, button. Wow, somebody's about to lose the gift for this particular session. If nobody says anything, that gift goes away. <laughs> so who is going to answer? I can't see any hands raised. Could you ask the question? Okay, so is it going to make good deal? Okay, so she has modified the question. Is it good to make good deals, right? That's what you ask. It... Tell me the question again. Also, you, when you are desperate, is it good to make a deal? Is it good, is it good to, make to make a deal, a deal when, when you are, are desperate? desperate? You really want something. Desperate. It's called negotiation. Yes. No. To negotiate. We can negotiate with daddy and mommy. We can negotiate with our friends. A skill we need to learn, even in this lockdown. Negotiation. TV oh, time. So, um, the child time. at Idayat Alimi says no. No, is that the correct answer, Auntie Tami? Yes. It's awesome. It's not that... to make a deal when you are desperate, so to negotiate. Okay, so it's not desperate. good to make a deal when you are desperate. Idayat, please, could you give me your phone number? Where? Um, let me unmute you, or can you unmute yourself? Okay, okay, okay. So, Idara, please send your phone number in the chat and let uh, so that um, Farida can introduce our next author who is already here. So, the way we are going to do this question and answer is the first person to answer correctly gets it. So, you always have to be really quick because it's one question per author segment. Do we all get that? Okay, so Idara, please put your phone number in the comment section. Farida, please help us with the next author. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Our next author is Judy Dada. Judy Dada is a Nigerian screenwriter, actor, poet, playwright, producer, and author. He has produced and written several films. He has also written several books for children and for adults. In 2019, he was awarded the prestigious NLNG Prize for his children's book, 
children's novel, Boom Boom, Exploring Sickle Cell Disease. Um, you can get Jude's book from Bookum Cafe, Amazon, Pataba, Parisa, Roving Heights, and some other books. So he's reading his book, Boom Boom. Um, so Jude will start now. Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Jude. As she uh, introduced me, I'm um, honored to be here. Um, I'm going to read really fast so that um, I stay within the allotted time. Um, so happy lockdown kids out there. I hope my book is called Boom Boom. Um, Boom Boom is about um, an eight-year-old boy called Osaik um, who is um, fighting to save the life of his five-year-old sister who is called Ege Boom Boom, who is um, sick from sickle cell anemia. So I'm reading from chapter three, which is called Boom Boom is her third name. Okay. So I begin under the time. Okay. So I, I remember how much my mom cried the day she was told that my sister would be like her. My dad didn't cry at all, but his silence was just like tears. It was heavy and very sad. I was too young to understand what was wrong at the time, and no one bothered to explain it to me. But the night my mom slept and didn't wake up, she told me that she and my dad should not have had my sister. She said that they should have known born with the same illness that afflicted her since my dad had the genotype AC and she had the genotype SS. She explained to me what genotype means as she groaned from the pain that made her tremble with heavy beads of sweat on her body. First, she told me about genes. A gene is what determines a characteristic you have. It is like a recipe that makes food come out a certain way, she said. Like a manual that teaches you how to play a video game or build a tree house. Yes, aren't you a brilliant boy? I smiled proudly and eager to prove the genes. She answered without missing a beat. You get your genes from your parents and it controls how you look, speak, and behave. A genotype is the totality of the genes that is given to you by your parents when you are born. It is like the first birthday gift you ever received. But you get this while you are still inside your mom. So I got a genotype when I was in your tummy. Yes, you did. The AS genotype. AS, yes, but it's not a bad genotype, even though it is not the most common genotype. What is the most common genotype? AA. How many genotypes are there? There are seven major types of genotypes. They are AA, AS, AC, SC, CC, S beta, thalassemia, and SS. The last one is the genotype that causes sickle cell anemia. I see. So your genotype is different from mine. Yes, it is. I have the SS genotype. Hmm. I took in that information with a great deal of thought. She continued speaking. Everyone has a specific pair of genotypes, which they inherit from their parents. Some have AA, some have AS or AC, and others have the SS genotype. In order not to transfer the SS genotype to your children, anyone with SS should not marry and have children with anyone with SS. Neither should anyone with AS marry and have children with anyone with AS or AC. Neither should anyone with SS marry and have children with anyone with AS or AC, because in all those cases, the chances of having a child with sickle cell anemia is high. What genotype does that have? AC. I see. So in our case, you, my mom, has SS, and dad has AC, and you both had me, who has an AS genotype, and, and your sister, who has the SC genotype. She had finished this statement for me, as though the information was something only she was permitted to speak about. It was tinged with guilt, and her words sounded like she was chastising herself. There was silence as the words left her mouth and hung in the air between us. It was a fact that we had come to accept. My sister was carrying the same cross my mother was carrying, but my sister was luckier than my mom. Her pain was not as bad or as frequent as my mother's because my sister has the SCH disease, which is the second most common type of sickle cell anemia. She inherited the C gene from my dad and the S gene from my mother. 
Okay, yeah. So I'll stop here. How am I doing for time? Very well, exceptionally well. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Okay. So what so, question yeah. would you like to ask? Oh, well, first of all, I just want to ask. Um, um, I don't know if they can hear me, but um, who 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 out there has heard about um, sickle cell anemia? Okay, please Could type your responses in the comment section. Aisha okay. has raised her hand. Aisha, please type your comments. What you want to say in the comment section? Diet Alimi seems to be the one who is like on, on, She's on fire. On the <laughs> <laughs> um, Idayat says me. Who else has heard of sickle cell? Okay. Okay, they're so, always so in their hands. Okay. They're, they're always in their hands. Okay, so I've read an excerpt from the book Boom Boom, and I've talked about seven different kinds of um, genotypes. Um, who can Tell me what those genotypes are, the seven genotypes I spoke about, seven types of genotypes I spoke about. So do you, would you prefer this person to speak or to write? Okay, fastest person to write. <laughs> so that we don't have commotion in the, with the noise everywhere. A couple of people who are saying me in the, in the chat, so I guess we should just use the chat. Okay, someone has... Okay, I see A A A A A S A C A C S C. That's from Olufunke. Um, that was... Uh, okay, great, great, great. <laughs> okay, nice. So I, 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 don't want, I don't want to take a um, uh, bite into the other person's time, the other author that's going to read up. I will surmise it here. Um, thank you so much for coming out here to join us um, celebrating World Book Day and, um, and this book fest where we are sharing stories or hearing stories from us. I want you guys to all go out there, be active, not just active in reading, but active in writing. Because um, the best thing that helps you grow mind-wise is reading and writing. And most importantly, go out there and show love and show support to someone you know or someone you've heard who um, has a sickle cell anemia disorder. They are not sicklers, they are warriors. They need your support, they need your love, they need your encouragement. Every day is a battle for them and every day they survive is a victory that they have. So even as we are in the corona era, remember that there are other disorders. Stay safe, stay at home, and of course, read a book. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please, Jude, I would like you to just go through the comment section, pick the person that answers the best, and um, send that person's name privately to me, and I'll privately ask the person for their phone number so that we don't put personal phone numbers on the screen. Okay? So, Farida, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Jude. Our next author is Dr. Nena Ochike. I hope I pronounced it well. Dr. Nena is a medical doctor, author of two children's books, including Ginika's Adventure, which made the long list for LLNG Prize for Literature in 2019. She's a mom of four children and an online course creator. Dr. Nena's books are sold at the Book Home Cafe and many bookstores like Latana. If you want to order in book, you can reach out to her. Her email address is um, nenaobasi at yahoo.com. So she will be reading, she has two children's books, Guinea Cat's Adventures and A Desert True Princess. She'll be reading Guinea Cat's Adventures today. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Hi. Good morning. Okay. Happy World Book Day. And thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, yes, books always best, best, best. So today I'm going to be reading from Guinea Cat's Adventures. My second book, this is Ginika's Adventures. Ginika is an eight-year-old girl who, though she's quiet and shy, comes alive when it's time to solve mysteries. She's like an amateur detective. So I'm going to read from just a short excerpt, and then um, I'll ask a few questions, and you can tell me what you think about Ginika. All right? So this is chapter one. Ginika first felt a drop, then a trickle, and she knew it was all over. Her stomach had already, was already hurting from trying to hold it in for so long. How she wished she had not had two bottles of apple juice during the break. Now it's Ginika first, and she knew it was all over. Her stomach was already hurting from trying to hold it in for so long. 
how she wished she had not had two bottles of apple juice during the break. Now a small pool of urine was forming at her feet. It had peeled her shoes and was weaving its way towards the desk behind hers. Looking back desperately, willing the yellow stream to disappear before anyone noticed, but it was too late. A laugh from the desk behind her told her she had been discovered. She bowed her head, pretending to be concentrating on her work as she heard the boy call to the chief examiner. It was the mean woman who had announced with a loud, frightening voice that too many pupils had already gone to use the bathroom and she would not give anyone permission to leave the game. This is the entrance examination to Navy secondary schools in Nigeria. It is not a birthday party. Nobody should stand until the bell is rung, she had shouted. It was just after this that Ginika felt the need to go, but she was too afraid. She had always been reserved, especially with adults. She was now nine years old, but when she was much younger, she used to stutter. That was until her parents found experts who worked with her until she learned to speak clearly. She voiced her opinion boldly when talking with her friends, but with strangers, she often found herself nervous. That was why she avoided speaking up until necessary. Ginika looked up when the examiner began to make her way to her desk. Oh no, close to tears. The lady tapped her shoulder. Do you want to use the bathroom? She asked, almost kindly. Yenika shook her head, squeezing her legs together. As though by so doing, she could erase the events of the past few minutes. When the examiner saw she was not going to board, she let her alone. At the front of the hall, she shouted, Five minutes more! The hall rumbled with ruffling sheets, shuffling feet, and tweeters of anxious children. Her only problem was how to make it out of the door without being made fun of. Your time is up. Drop your script on your desk and leave the hall quietly. We will go around and get them. It was the chief examiner again. Ginika watched the other officers as they moved closer to send pupils out. She had no intention of getting up till the hall was empty. The invigilators had started picking up the scripts. Her seat was close to the back. She sat at the edge of her chair, expecting one of them to notice under. Suddenly, a girl she didn't know ran in and tapped her shoulder. The chief examiner frowned and shouted, What are you girls doing there? Will you run out? The girl thrust a blue wooden shawl into her hands. Use this to cover your shirt, skirt, she said. Yenika accepted the soft shawl with a shy smile, rose, and tied it across her waist. Then she picked up her pencil case and both girls hurried out of the hall. Outside, they stood in the glare of the harsh sun. Yenika did not know what to say to her, so she dropped her gaze to her black shoes. I saw what happened, so I hurried to borrow the shawl from my mom. My name is Adiola. What's yours? I am Yenika. I'll give you my mom's number so you can call later to return the shawl. She wrote the number on the back of Yenika's hand. I have to go now. Thank you, Yenika whispered, looking up finally. You're welcome, Adiola replied. Mr. Kelena was leaning on the trunk of his car, waiting for his daughter after her exam. He saw other children running to the car park, but she was not one of them. He wondered why she was taking so long. Just as he was about to go looking for her, he spotted her shuffling towards him, a blue shawl around her waist. He doubted she was wearing one earlier, but kept his thoughts to himself. She smiled at him when she got to the car, avoiding his arms that were stretched out to hug her. Can we just go, Dad? He was puzzled. She was an intelligent child who found examinations easy. What could be responsible for her being so withdrawn? Ginika was already in the car. She threw her bag into the car seat and put on her seatbelt. Now, Dad got in as well. What's wrong, he asked, looking at her. I'm fine, Dad. I'm just tired. The questions were many, but I know I did great. Good. That's what I like to hear. He smiled. She nodded. So how did you get that shawl, he asked. Kinika burst into tears. I'm so sorry, Dad. The lady said no one could go to the bathroom because two people were going. I, I, I peed on myself. That is unacceptable. What is her name? He was already unlocking the door. Please, Dad, I don't want you to ask her about it. Could we just go home? She had placed a hand on his arm to stop him. He paused. Kinika, why didn't you insist that she you needed to be excused. I'm very sorry, Dad. I thought I could hold on. Her dad patted her back gently. 
it's okay. This has taught you something important, right? She blew her nose into a paper towel she got from a box in the car. I should have spoken up. Do you know the meaning of your name? Her dad raised her chin so she could look at him. Ginika Chuku means who is greater than God. You're right. When it is shorter, shortened to Ginika, it means who or what is greater. And that means you have something in you that should make you bold. Always remember whose you are. Thanks, Dad. So who gave you the show? Was it the examiner? Ginika laughed. Ha! <laughs> the examiner. <laughs> Puppies will learn to fly before she gives away her shawl. Mr. Kelena smiled. It was a girl named Adiola. She wrote her mom's number on my hand so I can return it. That's kind of her, Mr. Kelena said as he started the car. Her name sounds unfamiliar. Do I know her? No, oh, we just met. Oh, wow. She must be a great girl. Yeah. So I'll stop there for a while. Thank you so much for listening. And um, I have a question. Um, I would like to ask what you think um, Ginika should have done in her situation, okay? She had an examination. She needed to use the bathroom. The examiner said to me, people are going, you can't go out. And she really, really had to go. And, um, you know, because she's on the shy side, she ended up peeing on herself. So I'm, um, my question is, how would you have handled the situation? So someone has responded already from Ike okay. of do and he said she should have some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Awesome, awesome. I so agree with that. <laughs> please send me your phone number privately. <laughs> privately. Okay, I care of Sakyo do. I can see it's your kids that are here. Please um, send your phone number privately to me. Thank you so much, Dr. Nena Farida. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. You're welcome. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so um, you can get Dr. Nena's books from Bookworm Cafe, Latana, or from her direct, directly. Our next author is Anissa Danielo Nico. Okay, so Anissa is 13, and she's the author of Double A for Adventure, long listed for the 2019 LNNG Prize for Literature. She loves to read, write, sing, cook, and dance. She's learning to play four instruments, and she's a UN child ambassador for the SDGs of Global Goals. She also plays golf, and she likes to swim. She has recently finished her second novel, which will hit shelves after the lockdown. So looking forward to that. Um, so I, I think Anissa's own will go a bit differently, because I think that children will have more questions to ask Anissa since she's a child author. So I would, um, I would suggest that she reads for a shorter period of time and then answer questions from children who might be curious as to how Anissa does all that she does. Mr. Jude, you're yet to give me your winner for your category. No one. No one. No, no one. one got it. Really? <laughs> Guys, I've been, me too, I've been like, ah, I think you said a particular number and the answers I'm seeing are, <laughs> are not up to that yet. Exactly, so, right? Give you a chance, other participants, you can still answer that question correctly. He gave several. <laughs> Did you ask them to list it or did you ask for the number? How many? Yeah, I said how many. So you could list it, you could say the amount, the exact yeah. amount. Um, so I think saying how many is easier than because yeah. I think you know who have forgotten how um the, the, the names. Yeah. Hello Anissa, how are you doing? I'm doing very good today, thank you. Right. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So is yours. Okay, so Anissa, you can, um, hi Anissa, so you can hi. read just a, a little bit and then um, um, the, the other people in the chat should just please send in any questions you have for Anissa. I believe you all have questions for Anissa, um, seeing that she has written some books and they are really good books. So Anissa, you can just read a bit and then we'll look at the questions. Okay, thank you. I am going to read from chapter 6, chapter 7, is that okay? Of double Asian. After Akanu, her sister, and their father had ridden the lot, they came to the river of Rhodes. There was a tree house behind it with a rope hanging down. Suddenly, a hermit in white clothing came out of the tree house 
sliding down the rope. His gentle brown eyes gazed at them solemnly. Then he said, you must answer three of my riddles to get across this rope. If you do not, then I'll be forced to I can't look at her father and mother to the hermit. He began to recite. I devour books, but unlike you, they do not increase my IQ. I can't look close her eyes for a minute. Then the hermit looked surprised, but began with a riddle. Well, I am not. The dark, shouted Mr. O'Hee. The hermit spoke. I am impressed by your prowess at answering my riddles. Go in peace. The hermit turned and climbed back up the road. Alakano, her sister, and their father whooped in delight, not noticing the gleam of wicked black eyes hiding in. Three horses trotted steadily on the rolling hills while the riders on them chuckled and laughed. While we take a so back up, if you, have, if you can remember correctly how many types yes. Mr. Jude mentioned, just type the number in the comments section so we can identify you. Okay, yes. So, um, Mr. Jude, somebody. Oh, someone said seven. And that is uh, correct. <laughs> correct. So, Pelumi. Said, oh, that's cool. That's Pelumi, right? Yes. That was the first person, yes. So, Pelumi said oh, nice. phone number privately. Well done. And you take an oath to prove that you didn't Google it. <laughs> so when I say your phone okay, so number, I know that you might not have your own particular phone. It's a possibility, but the device you are using to be here, if it belongs to your mom, you are going to send your mom's phone number. If it belongs to your dad, you send your dad's phone number. Is that okay? So when I ask for your phone number, I don't mean yours in particular. It could be that of one of your parents. Okay. Okay. Belumi has sent. Up. Are you a boy or a girl? Pelumi, please type to me. Or oh, are you a mother or a father? <laughs> Mom of a boy. Okay, so um, oh okay, so it's the boy that responded, not the mommy, right? <laughs> We're assuming that it's the boy that responded. So yes, so you get something on your phone just now. Okay, so I can send his own. So, but I guess, um, do, do you want to continue reading? Um, okay, well, I could, yeah. But just let me know when Anissa is back. And, that's uh, fine. She's okay, back. I'm going to read it. Yeah, okay, so I'll just Correct. fill in. So I'm just space filling, all right? So Anissa, I'm not taking your chance. Back already. Oh, she's back. Okay, cool. Um, can you unmute her? Yes, unmute her. Yeah. I'm back. Sorry. Can I start? Yeah. In? That's okay. Okay. The three horses trotted steadily on the rolling hills while the riders on them chatted and laughed. Everyone was in good spirits. Soon, they saw a small cave with a large opening surrounded by apple trees. Girls, we're here. That's the cave, Mr. Ogu said, slowing his horse down to him. Great, Azina exclaimed. Then she frowned and waved her hand in front of her on his face. Hello, didn't you hear what Dad said? She asked the Khan. I jumped and smiled. Sorry, I thought I saw someone over there, I said. Fair enough, we saw a figure running across the place. Never mind about that, Azina said dismissively. We found the cave and that's what matters. We dismounted and walked up to the cave plucking a few ripe apples from the trees and stashing them away for later. They walked through the cave, Mr. Obey shining a torch to light up their path. Soon, they got to the middle and saw the pearl embedded in the dirt. They almost couldn't believe it. Go on, pull it out, Mr. Obey said, his voice echoing in a creepy way. Azina dug around the pearl and pulled it out, wiping her hands on her jaw first. All of them stared at it in amazement. The pearl looked as if it held all the oceans and lakes of the earth, all merged into one very beautiful sphere. Mr. Obey tucked it into his bag, smiling, when suddenly a loud, frightened whinny of a wild horse pierced the air. All three jumped on their horses and galloped in the direction of the pearl. They found a tunnel, which they entered after they had dismounted. 
After hours of wondering, they came to a little wooden door. The twins were about to go in, but their father stopped them. Listen, he said. The twins listened closely. Is that somebody crying? Asuna said. It sure sounds like it, Akano replied. Let's just go on and get to the bottom of this, their father said. After going through the doors, they found themselves in the wall with the code, the hole, and the riddle on it. The riddle, once solved, gave a clue as to where they could find the objects that could be the hole, which helped open the door. The code also helped to open the door. They moved closer to read the riddle. Ha 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 ha. You thought it would be easy, didn't you? The answer is in the mountains of Murray, and you will never find it. Just to get your bogus brains going, here's a little clue. Of course, your me the jewel that will help my prisoner depart, is located in Maruna's heart. Wickedly yours, Margaret. Where are the mountains of Maruna? wondered everyone. Akano started muttering something and writing on the map. This Margaret is feeling evil, so maybe it's a trick. But I don't think it is. According to the map, we are not far from the mountains of Maruna. She pondered, her face creased into a frown. Of course, what she needed by Marona's heart was one of the tunnels inside the mountains. Her sister continued, looking closely at the map. And so, it must be inside one of the tunnels. Their father concluded. They quickly cantered to a secluded spot to spend the night as it was getting late. Their father gathered firewood while the twins took the map and found their way to a nearby farm that was marked on it. Okay, thank you, Anissa. Um, uh, our guests, do we have any questions? For, you can ask her anything. Um, how did she get the idea for her book? How did she start writing? There's so many questions to ask. And um, I think Anissa should also ask us one question so that we can get someone to win something in her segment while they are preparing their other questions for her. Okay. Who wants to go? Anissa, what question do you have? <laughs> okay, Miriam Oladeji is asking what your motivation is. But before you tell us what your motivation is, we need you to tell us, ask us a question so that somebody can win something in your segment. A question from what you read. Okay. So, what was the answer to the first riddle? What? Okay, what was the answer to the first riddle? That's her question. So as you begin to type that in the comment section, Anissa, please tell us what your motivation is from Miriam Oladeji. Okay, my motivation is just reading books because I have a lot of authors that I love and reading their books is what inspired me to write because I felt like I could do something like them, give somebody else a story to write. And apart from that, my mom is also my inspiration because she's always supported me. She always helped me, helps me in whatever I do. And she just inspires me to keep going because she's always there in my form. Awesome, awesome. Is the answer to your first riddle book? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm close, right? Because I can see two comments saying book, and you say it's not. Another question for you is who inspires you to write from Tulu Lokwe Bakari? Okay, um, that would be my mom and my favorite authors. Okay. Okay, who else has the answer to the riddle? She says it's not book. But it's close. <laughs> okay. Try again, Miriam Oladeji and anyone else. Okay, um, Adeshola Ali says, what's the riddle again? Anissa, do you want to tell me? Okay, you? I'll read it. Just the riddle. Well, the riddle is, I devour books, but unlike you, they do not increase my IQ. 
Okay, I can suck you. Do I say it's bookworm? Is that correct? <laughs> yes. yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so um, we already have your number, I can suck you. Do I so we'll do as we did just a few minutes ago. <laughs> And if you've received something from us, please come and say something in the comment section so that people understand that we're not scamming you guys. We're actually giving you something, right? Okay. There's another question for Anissa. What kind of books do you like, Anissa? I like pretty much everything, but my favorite genres are mystery, adventure, and fantasy. I actually love books. I combine all those three. And it's just, but I'll read anything. Do you have a favorite book? Yes, actually. It's called The Princess Academy by Shannon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's another series that I like. It's called Ruby Redford, and they're really, really good. Ruby really what? Ruby Redford. Okay. Do you have another question? Um, okay. Someone says, um, how can you start reading? Give me reading as in learning to read. Hello, me Do you mean as, as in learning to read? Okay, while we wait for that, there's another one. Um, what advice do you have for young children out there who desire to be like you? Um, I'd say just keep on following your dreams because it's what matters. You have to believe in yourself and just keep on writing, just keep on doing what you want to do because if you work hard at something, you'll succeed in it. Okay. Awesome. I like that. How did you cultivate the habit of writing? Well, I was writing from pretty much as soon as I could read because back then I was in traditional school and we had to write like short stories and stuff for literacy. So I would write my own stories from that time. And it just began to be something I just enjoyed. Okay, then um, the person who asked how early you start reading, she says, um, that's reading by yourself. When did you start reading by yourself? When did you learn to read? When I was around four. Okay. Someone says, in your many wise years, if you haven't been counting, how many books would you say you have read? <laughs> That's a hard question, honestly. Um, over a thousand, actually. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> There's another question for you here. How can you motivate other kids to read, especially those who, read, who really don't like to read on their own? Well, for people who aren't readers, I just think it's that they haven't discovered that you can go to many places inside the book without leaving your house. And you can go on a mini adventure just by reading a book. And some people, don't always discover that. So I just encourage them to give it a chance because you never know what you'll find. Awesome. Someone says big ups, Anissa. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anissa. Our next author is here. Thank you so much, Anissa. Thank There's you very one much. Let's just take one last one. How do you combine writing with your academic life? Being an ambassador, how do you bridge the gap? Well, it's all about making time for the things that are important because if I do my schoolwork early and everything else I'm meant to do, then I can still find time to write. But it's just about making sure that there's balance in your life. Okay, thank you so much, Anissa. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's time for the next author. So Anissa's books are available at 
The book form cafe, Pataba, Bookville World in Port Harcourt, Roving Heights in Lagos and Abuja, Book Peddler in Lagos, Tabitha's Kids in Abuja and Adam's Pages in Abuja. Um, I don't know whether in Talabi is an author, publisher of Clever Clogs books, and the convener of festival. She's passionate about books. So the book she's reading today, these are her books, but the book she's reading today was just launched this past Saturday on Zoom. Very nice. It's Toby Bakes a Cake. And so that's what she will be reading today. Hello. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear you. We can. Hey, this is a new adventure for me. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So I'm going to read, if I can figure this out, I'm going to read Toby. I'm going to read Toby Bakes a Cake. I'm still working on getting this thing right. Yeah, do it. Let me know if you can see the book on your screen. Yes, I can see it. I believe the other kids can also. Please write in the comments if you can see it. Can you see the book? Yes, I can. It's okay. I can. Wonderful. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book. One book. Fabulous. So um, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, I'm a children's picture book author. Um, I've written about eight, maybe nine. Um, children under the age of 10 based in Nigeria. All my stories are based in Nigeria. Most of them are based in Lagos. One, Cobb the Antelope, is based outside Lagos. Um, the Toby series consists of Toby Visits the Conservatory, Diary of a Child from Abroad, and um, I thought it would be very good if we had more books that shared our narrative, our worldview, our perspective. Um, thus, I started writing books specifically for children in West Africa, but um, with with great um, application for children generally, and especially for children of So happy, happy, happy to share this particular book with you. Even though we had a lockdown, we decided not to um, hold back um, on releasing the book. And um, we decided to do an online launch and the book is available um, as an e-book from Clever Clogs book. So while we're waiting for her, I want the kids to type in the chat box. I hope this, I hope you are learning something new from the different stories that our authors are reading. And if you are, I would like you to start sharing a bit what you have learned from the different stories from Mrs. Timilalua's session to Jude's session, Dr. Nena's session, and um, yes, up till that. So please share with me in the comments. What has been your top learning point from any of those stories? Chinedu Onyizu says, we shouldn't make a deal under pressure. We have to be patient. Awesome. That is so good. And that is really important because, you know, as we grow, things will be thrown at us. And it's, it's now dependent on us to make the right choices, to be able to withstand external pressure and even internal pressure too. Okay, who else has something to share? Olufunke says, I learned to always be bold and speak up. Yes, very important. Ayomide says, I learned it's never too early to start writing. Wow, that is so good. And that's really important. If you don't even get anything today, you should get that part that it's never too early to start. You know, you can just, you know, become one of the amazing superstars, you know, children, authors. Okay, who else is sharing? Chinedu says, by reading a book, you can travel on an adventure. Very true. You do not have to step out of your state or your home or your country to travel to different places. Olufunke says, I also learned the different types of genotypes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So my apologies for that. We had a power outage. Oh. Okay, that's so we're fine. we're going to try this again. 
Okay. Can you see the book? Yes. This is a different view now. This is a double page spread view. All right. So let me see if I can make this work. All right. So Toby bakes the cake dedicated to the children at Kesham School. Here we go. Toby's older brother, Darry, has just passed his driver's test. To celebrate, mom and dad invite the whole family to lunch. Auntie Wande and Auntie Bissy come early to help mom get ready. Can I help too, says Toby. Of course you can, says mommy. Goody, says Toby. Let's pluck the leaves for the Ewedu together. Sort, pluck, wash, blend, cook. Mummy stirs the Ewedu. Auntie Wande makes the Begiri. Auntie Bisi does the Amala. Dare seasons the stew. Grandma, grandpa, uncles, aunties, nephews, nieces, and cousins are all in the house. I'd like to bake a cake for my brother, whispers Toby. Can you show me how to do it, please? Yes, says daddy. Let's melt the butter and mix it with the flour. Add eggs, milk, and sugar. What flavor should we make the cake, says daddy. Hmm. How about, hmm, says Toby, how about carrot? Great idea, Toby, says Daddy. Auntie Bissy grates the carrots. And while she's grating, she's singing, Where she? Whisk it all together, says Daddy. You can put it in the oven now. Uh, set the timer for 30 minutes, says Auntie Wendy. When the cake is done, the bell will ring. Daddy sets the table. Daddy brings out the drinks. Everyone gathers in the dining room to bless the food. Let's eat, says Mommy. After lunch, Toby takes her ball back to the kitchen. Oh no, says Toby. I forgot to set the timer. It's only a little, it's only burnt a little bit around the edges, says mummy. We can trim it off. See? Toby presents the cake to her brother. Well done for getting your driver's license, says Toby. Yes, says everyone. Congratulations, we are very proud of you. The cake tastes yummy, says Darry. Thank you, Toby. The end. So that, and then the book at the end has some activities, some coloring, some multi-choice activities and so on. And that is my new book, Toby Bakes a Cake. Hope you like it. I'd love to get your feedback. If you have any questions about the process of creating a children's picture book or any other questions, I'd be happy to take them. Do you have any question for the listeners as well? For the children? Because they're going to be yes. impressed. So if you have any questions? Yes. Um, there's several things that happen in the story that, um, that are significant. Can anybody tell me at least one of those things? How do you know who's asking a question since everyone is... They are going to write it in Does the it comments. Um... Can you see the chat? Someone says, that's a wonderful story. Mirabel loves this story. Wonderful. Um, okay, so there's an answer. I'll go to Toby's cake burns. <laughs> okay, so I engage. Easy says Toby's cake burns. And then the kind, kind day says, I learned you should pre persevere. So that's before we okay, do. No, no, that's no, an no. answer. Uh, responses to, from a previous um, session. <laughs> 
the previous session. Good. Came Thank up. you, Izzy. Izzy says Toby's cake burns. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so Izzy, please send me your phone number privately. And Chinedu, you also had a, you also have a good answer. Unfortunately, remember what we said: fastest fingers first. So we'll go with Izzy on this one, and we hope that you are the first person. So, are you giving prizes to the person that answers the question first? first. Yes. So Izzy, I'll okay. Be so I see number. that um, I can asking for a repeat of the question. Question. I actually want to say something, if I may. Do we have a minute? I'm not sure what the time is like. Um, Uguchi, you're next. Can she? Yes, she can. Go on. Thanks, Uguchi. Yeah, Dare got his driver's license. It's quite significant because it shows that we shouldn't just go out and uh, think we can start driving without learning properly how to drive. He took the time to learn properly how to drive. And because of that, the whole family is celebrating because he got his license. And the other thing that's significant in the story is that everyone in the family helps out um, getting things ready. It wasn't just dumped on mom or little bits to help with either serving. Dara even helped with the cooking. It wasn't just left to the women. Um, Daddy was the one that helped Toby bake the cake. So all of those things um, are significant. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the story and thank you, Farida, one more time and thank you, Ogochi, for okay, moderating. So, um, just before you go, um, yes. usually, <laughs> it's usually the first person that answers correctly that um, gets the gift. So, who would you say answered correctly between Izzy and Chinedu? Based on um, I think both of, them, both of them did good and I, I, I would like to implore you that you give both of them a gift. <laughs> Because of the, the, the way the internet is, you don't even really know who to type in, in first. So, so please. I'll work on that. Thank okay, you. so Easy and Chile, do please send your phone numbers via um, private chat. Okay, so it's my turn. Let me just quickly read a story. All right, so I know you've been seeing me all morning. Let me just tell you who I am. But oh, before that, I think Farida wants to do a little intro and then I'll go. Okay, Farida. <laughs> Um, Ugochi Obidiego is a safety guru and the author of a child safety storybook series. She's the convener of the School Safety Summit. The next edition holds on, holds on May 16th here on Zoom. Um, she has three books so far in the series and she's going to be reading one of them today. So Ugochi, over to you. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. So like she said, my name is Ugochi. Some people call me Safety Chick on social media. So in case you've heard Safety Chick before, I'm the one. So like Farida rightly mentioned, I've written three books in my Child Safety Storybook series. And we recently got it published in French because the target audience is the African child. And we didn't want children in French-speaking African countries to be left out. So all these books are available on my website, www.thesafetychick.com. But today, I'll be reading to you from a new booklet I created very recently. This new booklet is titled, The Adventures of Muna, A Keep to Keep Guide on the Coronavirus. So I had to put something together so that children like yourselves would know about the coronavirus and know how to protect yourselves. Okay, so I'll just read from that. For the other books, the book one is free on my website so you can download it straight and then the other ones are for sale. So quickly, let's get to it so that we can manage our time well. Hello, will you be my new friend? My name is Muna Chimsu, but everyone calls me Muna. You can call me Muna too. If you are just reading about me for the first time, I am a seven year old girl who shares stories to help you stay safe from fire, falls, injuries, and other accidents affecting children like you. You can check out my other stories in the other books. Have you heard what is going on in the world? Many people are dying of a new type of coronavirus. In Nigeria, the government has shut down schools, and I hear it is happening in other countries too. My mommy says the government is trying to protect us so that we do not fall sick. What is coronavirus? My mommy and daddy taught Bobby and me about it. 
Bobby is my younger brother. They said they learned about it from the information shared by the World Health Organization, WHO. The World Health Organization is a special agency of the United Nations responsible for international public health. My mommy and daddy thought, okay, so this is what I learned. Coronavirus is a disease that can spread from one person to another. It spreads through close contact with someone who has it. This, what are the symptoms of the coronavirus? Fever, cough, and difficult breathing. Or you could say difficulty in breathing. How can you prevent it? One, we must wash our hands regularly with soap and water after coughing and sneezing, after using the toilet, and when our hands are dirty. We must also wipe our hands with a clean cloth or paper towel after washing them. The trick is to wash your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds and you can sing the birthday song when you do it. So most times we know that children want to just wash their hands very quickly and run off. But you need to take your time and you could calculate that time by singing the birthday song in your mind or you can sing it out. So that period will help you to wash your hands correctly. The second way to prevent it is you must not touch your eyes, nose and mouth with unclean hands. Also, we must only sneeze and cough into a bent elbow like this so that we do not spread particles. Or we sneeze into a tissue and throw it away immediately. So do not sneeze on it and then fold it so I can use it again. You have to throw it away immediately. When you are around other people, maintain social distancing. Social distancing means that you do not stand too close to another person. Always give a space of at least one meter. Also, avoid crowded places. Another way to prevent it is, or to protect yourself, if you are sick, you must report it early. Some people wear masks, but you are not supposed to use a mask except you are coughing sneezing or taking care of someone who is sick. This is why doctors and nurses wear special masks because they are helping the sick people. Stay at home to prevent the spread of the disease. Daddy says there is no current treatment, but scientists are working hard to provide a cure. For now, we must take safety precautions. Dear friend, I hope you are staying safe I don't want anything to happen to you. See you in my next adventure. New words. So every chapter in all my books always has a new word and then activity. And then it's also a coloring activity. So the new word here is pandemic. And what is a pandemic? According to the WHO, which is World Health Organization, a pandemic is a worldwide spread of the disease. So it means the disease has spread, has spread across different countries. So it's not just, say, in only Lagos or only in Nigeria. It has gotten to other countries. So because of time, I'll stop there so that we can give others a chance. I will make sure that our time is properly managed. So question. I have five questions here. What question should I ask you? <laughs> okay. Hmm. How can you prevent the coronavirus? Remember, fastest fingers first. Okay, I can, I can type first, cough, go. What's that? <laughs> so we'll give that to Olufunke because her sentence is clear. Okay, Olufunke says by washing your hands, constantly and i can see that we have so many people who have answered correctly but like the like the rule says the first person to answer correctly okay so if you would like to get a copy of the book the book is available on my website for free you can download it we've been able to send 
copies to over a thousand children across different states who may not be able to get it because they are not here in Lagos with us. So we've sent it to other states. And then we've also sent to some areas of Lagos like Ajegunle, Ikorodu, Makoko, you know. So if you want it, please, your parents should visit www.thesafetychick.com and you can download your copy for free. Okay, so I'm going to write a website in the comment section because I can see someone asking safety precautions, which primarily is washing your hands as much as possible and keeping unclean hands away from your eyes, nose, and mouth. Ugo cheese books are available. You can get them even during the lockdown. Let me just share my screen so you can see where you can get them. Okay, Olufunke, please send your phone number privately. So the website is here, www.thesafetycheek.com. That's it here. Okay. And Ugochi said that the first book, that's this one, is free, um, available to download for free on her website. 